Hello, and thanks for choosing Pebblehost. Today we'll be taking a look at how to install CoreProtect on your Minecraft server. CoreProtect is a data logging and anti-griefing tool used to roll back and restore your server. CoreProtect will track just about anything in your Minecraft world, from leaf decay to player interactions all the way to player deaths. It'll track chat, as well as any sort of items taken out of a chest, as well as put back into it. The best part about CoreProtect is it's extremely configurable, very easy to use, and very easy to set up. To get started, we're going to go ahead and download CoreProtect from the Spigot website, as well as we're going to download uh, Fast Async World Edit, which is World Edit, but for 1.16.5, as well as it provides a little bit more optimization for uh, your server um, compared to the original World Edit. Now we're getting World Edit as well, uh, simply due to the fact that CoreProtect will actually use World Edit in order to select a specific area to roll back or look up any sort of interactions within that area. Once both of those plugins have been downloaded, we're going to go to the panel, click FTP File Access, and go ahead and copy the FTP URI and paste it in the host field within FileZilla, click Enter, and then we'll actually need to go ahead and grab our password. We've gone ahead and input our password, so we'll press enter once again within the connect button here, and then we'll navigate to the plugins directory. We'll minimize the server panel and copy our two uh, plugins that we downloaded into the plugins folder and let those upload. Once we get the transfers have finished, we'll go back to the server panel and we'll go back to the main page here and go ahead and give our server a restart. By restarting our server, we're loading in these two plugins uh, into our server then we'll be able to then further configure them and use them as well. Once the server's been online, there is one thing that we will need to do with CoreProtect um, for a very quick configuration, and that's go to the MySQL database tab, and we're actually going to click this CoreProtect plugin uh, to configure a database for this plugin. So we'll click Configure, and what this will do is create a database called CoreProtect, as well as configure our actual configuration file in CoreProtect for us to use SQL. So once that's been configured, we'll go ahead and restart our server once more to apply those changes to CoreProtect. And once the server is fully online, we'll go ahead and copy our server IP. And we're gonna go ahead and jump in game and go over a few of the CoreProtect logging features as well as how to use the rollbacks. Okay, so we've gone ahead and jumped in game. And as you can see, I've got a little house here um, that I've kind of constructed as well as a chest that has some diamonds in it. Um, so to begin using CoreProtect, we're simply going to type the command slash co. And if we do slash co help, it will pull up all of the commands for CoreProtect. So as you can see, we've got co inspect, co rollback, co restore, co lookup, purge, reload, as well as status. The first one we'll take a look at is co status. And this one will give us the uh, plugin version as well as the database. So if you haven't set up the MySQL database, it's going to use uh, MySQL Lite by default, which will use an actual file rather than the SQL database, as well as it's going to tell you if World Edit is currently enabled. Now, like I said previously, World Edit is used to select a specific area that you want to either look into or roll back. And we'll show you that here in the video. The next command we're going to use is slash COI, and this will uh, turn the inspector on. Uh, you can do either I or inspect, so COI for short. And how this works is if I punch a block, um, obviously I'm in creative, so I can uh, attempt to break it. It's going to tell me that I placed the cobblestone 4.15 minutes ago. It's also going to tell me the area at, in which I've uh, selected, so it's given me the coordinates for this. Um, now, if we go ahead and right-click the door, uh, you'll actually see a whole bunch of other logs as well. So you'll see that I click the door here, here, and here. Um, but if I break the door, you'll see that I placed the oak door 4.75 minutes ago. So everything here will be logged. Now, if I try to select maybe this piece of sand, or uh, if I break that piece of sand, um, there's no data for this. This is a natural spawning piece of sand, so it's not going to be logged within the plugin. Now, if we go into this house here, obviously we can select a whole bunch of other blocks um, to show up that data as well. However, if we go ahead and select the chest, we'll see a little bit of information regarding it. So uh, you can see 3.42 minutes ago, I added 59 diamonds. Um, and then 3.45 minutes ago, I added five diamonds. 
So if we break the chest, it will just show us the actual block. But if we, you know, it's an interaction block. If I, same with the door, if I right click it, it's going to show us the interactions. So same applies to the chest. Um, whenever you, you right click something, it will show you the interactions for that block, if applicable. If we go ahead and uh, turn the inspector off, um, open up this chest and take out uh, half of those 59 diamonds, and we'll just keep them in our inventory. We can actually then turn the inspector on again and see that I removed a total of 30 diamonds uh, not even 10 seconds ago. The great thing about Core Protect is if we need to see, for example, who built this entire house um, or what happened within this area, we can do so very easily. If we do CO near though, it'll show us the interactions within the configured region that's uh, added in the config. I believe by default it is at five. Um, so you can kind of see the different interactions whenever we did CO near, um, we'll see this pretty much this entire house be built. We can click the arrow key here in chat to kind of go through those interactions, go through those um, data logging points to see where I click the oak door. Um, if we go all the way back, you can see I placed the cobblestone to build the house and so on and so forth. It will show us the entirety of this uh, house here. We can be a little bit more specific about this too. Um, so if we want to look up the blocks of a certain player or a certain user, we can do CO lookup uh, and then choose a user. So we'll say you, you uh, then a colon. And since I'm the only one, obviously I'm gonna select that. And then we can do action and we can have a whole bunch of actions that we can filter by. So if we want to say uh, place a block, we can say plus block. If we want to say break, broke a block, minus block. Uh, so let's go ahead and do plus block. Um, and then we need to select the radius. By default though, if you don't select it, it will be set to five. Um, but then the time as well. So the time uh, we'll set to 10 minutes and we'll do 10 M. And this will show us all of the blocks placed within those 10 minutes within uh, that specific radius of five or whatever the default radius is in your case. Now this isn't just limited to blocks being broken or any uh, player interactions with blocks in the world. You can also have this filter out commands a player has ran. So if we do action command 10 minutes, we can see all of our uh, core protect lookup commands. And as we go all the way back here, um, we'll see I set the time to day um, and if we go back even further, it would probably show that I went in creative mode. If we go ahead and type hi in chat, uh, that's another thing we can actually look up. So if we do action set to chat, it's going to show us the chat messages from that chat we just sent. Now, because we installed world edit, what we can do is go ahead and grab ourselves a slash slash wand and go over here. We'll select this region and we'll go uh, slash up one uh, to select up here. And now we can do slash co lookup colon hashtag world edit. And as you can see, there's other options too, uh, such as the entire world or um, any other worlds you have, but we'll go ahead and do world edit. And now we can filter within the area of the world edit selection. So if we do world edit um, block oak wood, you might need to expand the time slightly. there we go. So oak wood, um, and I placed it, I broke it and there's four different pages of results for this. Now, like any griefer would, uh, TNT is usually the cause of any iconic grief. So if we go ahead and just blow our house to bits, um, you can see there's uh, quite catastrophic damage here. We, we don't have a house anymore, our diamonds are missing. Um, everything is a miss. However, if we go ahead and grab that wand again, we can select this area and because everything is logged, we can roll it back. So if we do slash CO roll back, world edit once again, and you can do this by selecting, uh, instead of doing world edit, you can also select the radius. So if you want to do a radius of five, it would roll back the radius of five blocks. And then we're going to select the user. So we can do user, which would be me. Or if we don't want to select a user, we don't actually have to. Uh, it will just roll back the area um, to a specific time. So if we completely remove the user, we can actually just do time 20 minutes. And because there's no house in 20 minutes, it's going to remove it entirely. 
But so because we went back a little too far, we can actually fix that. We can do co restore, and this will restore any rollbacks. So it's as simple as rollbacks equal a undo, while restores equal a redo. So we can go ahead and restore the house, but as you can see, the TNT is still there. So we need to roll back a little bit uh, later. So let's try uh, 10 minutes. As you can see, the house is back. There is some items on the ground, obviously. There's not much you can do about that. So I've gone ahead and spawned in a villager, and I've spawned this in uh, to show you kind of how Core Protect will track mobs as well. So if we go ahead and kill this villager, he probably won't be too happy about that. He's running away. Um, we'll kill him. But we want to know what happened to him. You know, obviously there was a villager here. Something occurred to where now he's gone. So if we do CO uh, near, we'll see that I killed a villager 17 uh, seconds ago. So let's go ahead and roll back my uh, user to see if we can get that villager back. So I've gone ahead and actually had to roll back a complete minute. Um, the, as you can see, the villager is completely back and uh, he's right there. Now, of course, there are some limitations to core protect, uh, specifically being in the area you can actually roll back in regards to world edit. So if we wanted to go ahead and make a massive selection here uh, with world edit, so let's go ahead and do that. Actually, let's go up a little bit farther. And we'll try to roll this back. So roll back region uh, hashtag world edit t would equal 20 minutes. It's not going to let us because the maximum rollback radius is only 100 blocks. Now, in order to change this, well, we have two options. We can either change this in the config setting or we can use the global feature to roll back the entire server uh, within this amount of time. And if we actually do this, we can remove pretty much everything from the start of installing this plugin. So let's go ahead and do that. So region will be global and T will equal, we'll do three hours because I know nothing has happened um, past those three hour marks. I need to specify a user. So I'll make myself here. As you can see, everything is gone. Um, besides one thing that will not be gone is world edit. And that's just because these world edit blocks were from a, another plugin. Um, but as you can see, the house is completely gone and the server is just as it was before making the house or before even logging on. So you can roll back entire users from the beginning of the time they log into the server. There's one more command we're going to look at, and that is the CO purge command. So if we go ahead and run that, it's going to ask us for a time to purge. Now, CO purge will essentially purge a amount of data between a period of time. Now it's actually great to do this once in a while to free up some storage for Core Protect because what happens after a while, Core Protect will log so much data that it's actually going to build up in terms of overall storage usage. So we will run CO purge T and we'll do 30 days because that's actually the minimum amount of days that uh, we can roll back. So we'll go ahead and do 30 days and this will remove all of the data within the 30 days. So all of that data will be gone. That's gonna wrap it up for this video. If you have any questions regarding anything we've covered in this video, feel free to join the Pebbleos Discord and we'd be more than happy to help you there.